Okay, back from the truck show. Had a great time, met a lot of people. Um, I wanted to go see some other YouTube guys, never got the chance. Tim Gentry was not far from me, I didn't even realize it. Chad Keegan was there. Uh, James Petty, Pretty. Uh, who else? Oh, Steve Feschak. Wanted to try to get him to try a switchblade on his 3406B. I made a couple comments on his channel, but he never responded. I don't know if he didn't see him or what, but I got to get Killdozer going. And I'm going to get the blade off. I'm going to put him right out there and get jacking him up. And then use the crane to get these track frames off and put some new uh, rollers on the bottom and get those tracks I got from Minnesota um, on there. So let's see if we can get the old girl chugging. Got a couple bad glow plugs. She doesn't want to start on a couple holes. That's another thing I got to get fixed. I don't think it's the glow plugs. I just think it's uh, the harness. Got a bad, bad connection on them. So anyway, if you saw the meter in there, it said 9,700 hours. So that was, it's been 9,700 hours since I tore it clear down and rebuilt the engine did a lot of work to it blasted it painted it put that cab on it so those rollers oh they were on there before that way before that I'm I'm gonna guess those rollers probably pushing 15,000 hours 15,000 hours that's what old Jeff's doing today I'm gonna start tearing that off. The boys have gone out to Chalice to look at a couple of Wabco 35s. They're gonna to try to buy. Anyway, they're not here today to help me, so I'm on my own. So I think I'm gonna get the blade off out there. And uh, I can't pull it up too close to the shop because I've got to have good access to both sides with the crane to get the track frames off. The worst part about taking track frames off of one is getting that front end jacked up and blocked so that it'll stay up. But I'll get it figured out. It's been a while since I've taken them off. It's always a scary proposition when you get that front end up in the air like that you better have it pretty stable so anyway let the cat warm up figure out where I'm gonna put the blade get some blocks to hold it up and get out from under the blade but like I say I'd love to have the blade there to get it picked up somewhat first but uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that, so I got to sit here and contemplate. <laughs>
I found some caps and I just found a double JIC I can hook the hoses together I can't tell you how many of these couplers I've made and then put them somewhere and went yeah I'll remember they're there and then guess what I don't ever remember where I put them somebody's hitting me with a text message and wrench Gun won't turn off. Okay, now I gotta get the crane. Hook onto one ram at a time, support it, and drive the pin out, and then suck the ram in and hang it on those mounts up there. Because if you don't, it'll whack the chrome rod will whack those tracks like your big toe in the middle of the night on that coffee table you can do some damage I'm thinking I'm put it up there so I have access to both sides. Anybody want to buy a Nazi fuel truck? I got one Nazi fuel truck for sale. It says super white power on it. That's pretty Nazi, isn't it? It's got the real good pumps on it, too. That's what my dad always said. It's got the real good pumps on it. He said that when I bought it from him, and I never used it. Because the real good pump was uh, real effed up. But it runs, got a big old straight six Continental or super white power in it, gas. She runs. K2 
came from the Idaho National Engineering Laboratory, which at the time was called the Atomic Energy Commission. And the company that had it was Aerojet Nuclear. That sounds wicked, doesn't it? Aerojet Nuclear. Somewhere in the house I got me a, a Nazi officer's cap. Put that on when I drove it. <laughs> 2,000 gallons got big old uh, probably eaten top loader axles in it she's fast boys I mean fast so if anybody's interested in a super white power Nazi truck hit me up in the comments below it's yours Compressor on and running. This is a swivel a gentleman down in Texas sent me. This has been the best swivel ever. I want to thank him for that. This thing has done really well and has lasted. This thing is tough. If you need something like that, um, if the gentleman who sent this will put a link in there to his eBay so people can buy this, he won't regret it.
get out the bigger one for that. Okay, time to go underneath and unbolt the diagonal braces. Oh, if I can get the crap cleaned out and get on them. See that? Then it wants to trigger wants to stick. So pound on its mower. Whoa. There's one. Here we go. Coming. I gotta be careful with it. Get my fingers. Yeah, here she comes. Okay, unplug the battery, plug it back in, that works. What's wrong? So that's out. So when I lift it up, if I get it up high enough, I can either leave that pin in or push it out if there's room. But I want to show you those rollers. So the very back one's still intact. There's no flanges left. Next one up's been gone forever. The gut's in it. And then that one, I'm not sure if there's anything left. So.
So I did it a piece of cake, but my winch brake's still slipping. Um, so the question is, when I go to pick up that back end, is it going to push it forward and off those blocks? I don't know. I just have to unhook it, see what happens. Once I get it up, I gotta put a block and a piece of steel under the final drive. it up at all now. Shit. Can you believe that? Yeah. How am I going to do that now? Shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger. That's out. Jeff wins. I gotta go get something under that final. Hope that front end don't fall down. 
and then I got to get under those rollers to flip it up look at those things ooh wee heck that one's still good it's that one and that one got my money out of them didn't I <laughs> So I got one under here. I'm probably going to have to go down to Jake's and get a round block to put under that. But anyway, I can uh, bust out the steam cleaner, get all the dirt off of it, and then start cutting the welds. So all these are welded on here. Don't know that I did it in there. No. If you don't weld guards on a 9, They'll break off every time. These bolts won't hold them. Just won't do it. So, in order to get these bolts out, you have to use an extension, one inch extension. I'll have to get the torch and cut these out and off. They're in pretty bad shape. Pretty bad shape, man. But anyway, they still work tight. Finger Joe. Jake's got everything cut loose. So I've just got one bolt on this side. I can't get undone. I couldn't budge any of the roller bolts over here. Hey, Knox Pilati sent me a a text message. Do, 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 do. So anyway, I need new guards. I just need to find some better ones. Need a set to fit that old girl too. Oh, and on a side note, the boys are looking for some bull gears and pinions for their rock truck so there's a guy in missouri has got some but that's a long ways away if you guys know of any wabco 35 c's or d's um they're being scrapped or runners we'd sure be interested i guess those final drives were the weak point they were junk in all of them they just don't last 
anyway if they can get good gears in it it'll last them forever i think a lot of it probably has to do with slam shifting and all kinds of crap tear the teeth off of them maybe we'll just go all pakistani and weld them back on how's that what you barking at what you barking at <laughs> mr griffey's out here he don't want to be here what what okay got some packages from viewers i need to open these are the last four packages i had in my office again i do apologize for letting them sit so long i think i got some awesome stuff here so let's get those open so this is an orfs cap and plug holy moly look at this that had to have cost some serious money holy moly oh wow so this came uh from le in l engines kent washington so whoever sent me this from kent washington if you were here i would give you a big kiss because this has got some serious stuff in it. I mean, tons of these caps for plugging lines. See, that's, that's O-ring, O-R-F-S. So it's got O-R-F-S stuff. It's got J-I-C, um, all kinds of stuff. This is completely awesome. Thank you very much for that. So, in the comments below, let me know who you are. If you want to, I'll put your name on here. So this right here is an adapter, and you screw that on, it's threaded in there. So you can put a C15 compressor on a D343. Steve's got like 2637Cs, so he's gotten pretty resourceful at making things to make them continue to run. Okay, this one's from Bob Wallen. Bob lives in New Jersey. Well, no, he's in New York. What was I thinking? He lives in Wasaic, New York. Bob's got a Brockway with 1693, and I sent him a good used exhaust manifold for it. And I've talked to him, helped him a little bit on some problems he had. Ooh, sweet, sent me a hat. HO Pen, that's awesome. Bob didn't say anything about not reading a letter. We'll see what he says. Hi, Jeff, happy belated birthday. I ended up with one extra hat from the HO Pen winter year anniversary open house. I took our Brockway too. I thought you might like it for your collection. Thanks for all the 1693 consultations. Well, Bob, you're more than welcome. I do talk to a lot of people about 1693s. I seem to be the old guy that knows. I've certainly worked on a lot of them. All right, so now we've got one here from Scott's Building Center, Mike Cheney, Greenup, Illinois. I think Mike sent me an email asking me if I got this, and I said, oh, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> well, I have. Oh, boy. Oh, Mr. Griffey treats. Mr. Griffey would like to be here for that. Oh, cool. Wheels of Time. Well, I've never seen this magazine, Mike. Ooh, reading material for the shop. Ooh, old Kenworth. That's cool. Oh, sent me some Altor for decals. I don't know if I have any Altor for decals on the door. Holy moly. 
Dear Jeff, it has been years since I have wrote a letter and enjoy your videos and watching older machinery work. I put some magazines that I thought you might like. I didn't know Idaho was so rocky and so little dirt. I am sending money for a yellow and black hat. Oh, yeah, geez. Absolutely, Mike. I just sent you one for free for all this stuff. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, I'll get that out right away. All right. So I want to thank everybody for sending all this cool stuff. Mike, I'll get that hat out right away. I'm going to end this video here. Next video, we're going to do a comparison of my Ingersoll Air Impact versus the mill or the uh, Ingersoll electric 40 volt impact and the Harbor Freight earthquake and I'm going to take the bolts out of the rollers and get those rollers out and I'm going to show you the difference in impact wrenches uh, the volume of air what the electric will do Ingersoll claims 2600 uh, foot-pounds of undue torque which is insane and we'll compare that against the earthquake, which is, uh, they said, 2,000 foot-pounds of undue torque. And my old Ingersoll Twin Hammer, which is, I think, rated around 12, 1,400. And we'll see which one does the job. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. It's all right. It's all right.